Ahram wa Sahran and welcome to this video. So I know that I have uploaded one other video if you haven't uh, checked on my channel where I'm talking about um, accepting Islam as, a, as an adult. But because I have like uh, the time, alhamdulillah, to actually sit down here and uh, talk about some other topics within uh, you know, being a Muslim or Islam or religion, I thought I am going to take that advantage, inshallah, and talk about it. <laughs> because it's actually raining outdoors, so I'm like, and I have off time, so I am able to do this. Um, so in this video, I thought that, what should I talk about? Maybe I will start off with Iman. Iman, like your uh, level of religiosity at certain times. I don't know if I said it wrong. <laughs> uh, I got confused, I don't know, with a specific word, word for this, you know, in Arabic. But it's like, at least it's something that I'm very aware of, you know, myself. So it's something that sometimes, you know, your religious identity and your religiosity is very like, it's very high up, you know. <laughs> then sometimes things, uh, life events happen, other forms of identity such as professional role or other social uh, roles and stuff it sort of comes in the way or maybe not comes in the way but you're just focusing your uh, concentration and attention towards other things and all of a sudden you feel like your uh, religious self just like got a little bit reduced in addition to other things that was taking up your energy so I sort of wanted to discuss how you can maybe and i don't have a solution for this but i'm just thinking how you actually can maintain sort of a, a stable or a balanced form of religiosity throughout your life uh, or your ev everyday life you know so i think actually that now i have a little bit of sun here actually so alhamdulillah because now it's got a little bit light uh, lighter um so yeah, I think that, for example, in Islam, you have the five uh, daily prayers. Um, and this is not about if I do uh, five daily prayers every day, because as we know, there are challenging challenges in conducting five prayers a day, as it is with a lot of other things. Actually, some of our priorities, you know, might be towards work and career and stuff, and then we might down prioritize other things. But let's take the five daily prayers of Islam. If you're following the prayer schedule during one day, your concentration and your focus towards the religion is always going to be returned and it's going to keep your Imam more balanced, you know, uh, because you are like constantly during the day, always getting back towards the religion and towards focusing on it even if you're doing other things in between the prayers. And I think this is some form of discipline um, and cons like priority issue because like of actually conducting the prayers. Like you need to be very disciplined and you only have a certain amount of discipline that you actually can like use on a daily basis. So. Uh, if you have a very demanding work or you have studies or you have other obligations in your life that take up a lot of that energy that you are able to focus on discipline, you're going to have less discipline towards the religious uh, rituals throughout the day. So one way of conquering that might be that you are able to uh, create habits for yourself to be uh, making a schedule and making it into a habit of actually sort of framing your own day because at one point you have to feel like you're owning your own day. I know that, that when you're going to work and stuff, which I do, it's very hard to feel like you're owning your own day because you are, you feel like you're owned by the organization you're working for. You have to frame yourself according to the organization. But somehow you have to be able to adapt your own uh, priorities into the professional role. And that might be of infusing these 
five, um, you know, daily prayers, which probably is not even going to be throughout the whole day at work because you will have other, you know, the prayers are, of course, aligned with the with the sun and it's uh, sort of move throughout the day. So you may not be working throughout all the hours. That's what I'm trying to say. But that might be one thing. So consider discipline something that you have certain amount of. It is a resource. You have to sort of break it apart and put a little bit of discipline into certain things you want to have discipline in. And then you know that when you have used up all your discipline of the day, you're just going to be a failure potentially at other things you're trying to do. So um, that is one thing. And creating a habit is something that takes at least three months to do. And this is if you're focusing on one new habit that you're trying to create. Like you can probably have the intention of starting off like, you know, doing, um, becoming a vegan, starting up uh, a business or uh, doing a workout every day and having a lot of like ideas and like goals and you wanting to make habits out of them and you're doing them all at once. If that is what you're doing, you're probably going to fail at it because you are again not able to um, have so many things that you're trying to implement at the same time. It's gonna be, you know, you have to perceive it as a learning process and you have to be able to have enough time and energy and resources at hand to actually implement it into your daily life in order to create like habit and you have to see the first three months gonna be hard. The like total six first months of setting up a new habit is gonna be, it's gonna be the new like the frame you have to set up for yourself. So if you're intending on starting off praying like one day, once a day, that might be a good start, you know. <laughs> Maybe you feel like your time is here on the planet, it's limited, you know. So you might start off and trying to do five times a day prayer. But at the same time, when you're doing that, don't try and like at the same time, maybe have a starting off the habit of I don't know, doing other stuff because you know and because this is you are aware of yourself and your abilities and stuff like where, where is your limit, you know, that you are not able to do more than what is possible actually to do over time. Because if you're using up more energy one day, you're going to be more tired another day. So there's like a give and take and you have to sort of be aware of these things. Consciousness is very important, but I think um, I read somewhere or I heard someone say that like 95% of the time during the day, we are like doing stuff unconsciously, which is kind of creepy. If that is the truth, if it's 95%, I think we should have more awareness in our, <laughs> you know, actions and stuff. But anyway, so yeah. So that was about the how the fate sort of is fluctuating over time. And I think, I don't know if this might be the truth or not, but I'm thinking that uh, fate and how it goes, it may be uh, like moving in a cycle, you know, that you have certain forms of more or less religiosity during specific time points in the cycle, or it might be that it's just like moving in a linear fashion and you it's sort of moving like this and you have to try and create like a form of straight line for that and uh, I think also um, especially when you are around other people who are Muslims you know and you see that some people are maybe all of a sudden they are like feeling they are distant towards their religion or they maybe are not really, uh, you know, really doing certain things they were doing before that had a religious meaning, relig religious intention. Uh, and you might be thinking, okay, they're going to drop out of the whole, um, like being conscious and intentional with their religion and maybe even their practices that they're doing. But uh, it might just be because their Iman is not really where it should 
be on a more safe, <laughs> you know, like line. It might have dropped a bit, but there is always the option of it will rise again and then, you know, move a along the line. What you might be able to do is just to show a good example, or you might be able to uh, ask a question about it, but it's still not your business, to be honest, what someone else is doing between them and God, or between them and their religion. If you step in between someone else's religion, in the sense that you are uh, really, like, how should I say, you are, like, questioning uh, in a very negative way what they are doing and stuff, you know, then, and trying to, I, I mean, there might be a good intention that you have, and that intention is always going to be counted, but at the same time, um, remember the fact that things uh, like uh, spirituality and God, it's like between the person and God, and you are not in between there. So it's not like you're going to uh, make someone else believe something, you know. You can always, always talk to them about something, and like try and, uh, you know, get them more towards, you know, maybe setting up schedule for the prayers or like talking about it but it's not you who are going to make them do something really and it's not going to be your opinion about it that is going to be counting because it's between god and the person in from a religious perspective so this is interesting also uh, because sometimes some people have very negative thoughts about people who are all of a sudden not displaying their religion and also what we should be aware of is that currently and uh, over the last couple of decades or so there's been this kind of move towards more privatized expression or practice of religion privatized form of practice of religion so people are practicing their religion more privatized but not everyone. And uh, I think that the public uh, institutions in the society or the public uh, spheres and like areas of the society such as schools, hospitals and stuff, they should be more like acceptable towards religious expressions. Because sometimes I feel like uh, professionals in these institutions, they are very uh, acting from their professional point of view, but sometimes they're also acting out of their individual subjective points of view, because it's very hard in whatever you might be doing, even if you're a professional and you're trying to act professional, you're still going to have your own subjectivity somewhere in that mix, and it's going to be infused in what you're doing. So, because how are you going to step out of your own mind completely and be like, just acting professionally. You still have your own subjectivity and personality in it. So I feel like some people who are in the professional roles and stuff and in these uh, institutions, they could be more acceptable towards uh, religious expressions because it is something that is maybe also a cultural expression and we know that you know, it is good to have this mix of different cultures and expressions because it is sort of providing new ideas and, uh, I mean, you could probably discuss how ideas are mixing with each other and it's sort of hybrid, becomes a hybrid of something um, and how things are sort of evolving and like developing and, of course, um, some people might want to have a say in how things are developing because they have some form of project perspective where there's a goal and there's an implementation part, there's a planning process and there are certain things that need to happen and everything else cannot be done and is perceived as risks. But, you know, from the point of spirituality, I think what we have to understand when it's concerning the religious expressions is that it might just be reflecting uh, something that is stemming from spirituality. And spirituality is something that everyone has access to because they are human. So spirituality is something that all people have access to because they are humans. And that spirituality might be 
taking forms in different shapes depending on the religion and the religious identity because that religious identity might also be connected to cultural expressions in certain ways so because of those reasons uh, yeah I don't know it should just be more acceptable maybe uh, so what else should I talk about concerning this uh, yeah I think it's very interesting can you practice can you sort of improve your iman uh, I don't know if you can do that you know I think as I said discipline is a big part in this I think self-reflection is another part if you can reflect upon certain things uh, but it's it's really I think also to you know like observe and uh, surround yourself with people who are doing the things you are trying to do or try and even if you don't are able to surround yourself with certain people that you are <laughs> trying to you know find inspiration from you have the internet of course you can always seek information and uh, inspiration in uh, from the internet but I think you also have to be very mindful about it because there is a tendency of homogenizing expressions because we are exposed to the same things on the internet so we are like looking at the same images and we become this, the same thing that we're seeing and it's a lot of people who are doing exactly the same thing and then we are homogenized we are like doing the same thing we are not having different expressions and we start to value the same things and we start to want to uh, wear uh, certain clothes and stuff that are similar because we perceive them as having some positive affirmations and uh, we connected positive emotions towards them and other values so this is the complexity in that way but i think inspiration alhamdulillah it is very like it's just presented wherever you are at so you will be able to find it but i think definitely if you are able i mean this is a good point of making that you can always seek out some uh, someone who is like educated on the religion you can go and speak with them because they are able to inspire you they are able to talk about the religion from the point of actually have in-depth information about the text the scriptures or the recitations and stuff and the, some of the practices that are conducted and they are also probably aware of the differences in certain religious practices that are supposed to be the same within the the religion so you can always find inspirations from such people and they are often available also to um, to the public you know in if you go to a mosque you can always find someone there to talk with if you need inspiration and to sort of you know getting more of your faith you know into your practices and stuff so and some people again might feel a bit like you know i don't know resistance towards going to a mosque especially if you are a revert you might feel like okay are you really going do you have to do certain behaviors and actions and stuff if you go to a mosque honestly it is an open space why not go there without having all these ideas about what it is or what it is expecting from you because the only thing that is expecting something from you at the end of the day is God, if you are a believer. So, and God don't really mind if you go to a mosque, probably. So, I'm not going to speak for that, but you get the point that it's not so much about having that resistant, or, or resistance or like hesitations about certain things. Also, I think that become aware if you have that resistant, because sometimes I feel like if you have been brought up as a Muslim, you are very already know in the known of a lot of practices and you perceive it as normal because it's something you have, you know, observed and been part of for so long time. Compared to someone who is a revert, who is just like getting used to it and is a, like a kid who is just recently introduced to a lot of things and feel stupid because you don't know all the actual steps and forms that you might be expected to follow and uh, because of those i think to be um, like uh, aware that to have any form of 
you know, like, you know, negative uh, emotions towards these forms of like, like for example, going to a mosque. Um, it's it's more about your own perspective on it and not so much about the actuality of it. Uh, so yeah, it's a lot about uh, your own perception. You know, at the end of the day, most things that you have in front of you is your own perception about reality and if you can find some self-reflection on it it's going to be very useful because it will help you in uh, perceiving you know perceiving for example other religions with more um, other forms of perspective and of course at the end of the day it's gonna if something is gonna be the right for you you now I say it from my individualistic perspective, perspective it sounds like, because I say if it's going to be right for you, uh, it maybe have to feel, you know, some emotional connection to it. So, and this emotional connection is something you can probably um, help to sort of set up. As I said, you can go into social groups that are where there are Muslims and you can create the emotional connection to those people and by that you're also setting up the possibility of setting up an emotional connection to the religion. But there are other ways you can do this, you know. But at the end of the day you might also say that, okay, even if it doesn't feel right for me, if I view it from a larger perspective, if it is like I have read it and I perceive it to be logical. So if I'm a rational human being, then if this is what seemed to be actual, then it should be that even if I don't have an emotional connection to it. So there are two different perspectives. And that's why I think Islam, if you go and read the Quran, you know, you will find that, okay, certain things in here is more like you actually can feel like these are very on point, like you know, like information, and it's going to be hard for you to say that, okay, this doesn't make sense, because a lot of the things in there make sense if you actually read it, so, uh, and it has done for kind of a long time, so I think that is another thing you can possibly try and do. So you have both approaching religion from a rational perspective and from an emotional perspective, so combine those two and you have really set up yourself for sort of stepping into some new ideas.